A while back I built the scene of the Cray 2, making use of my Silicon Graphics Tezra to build up all the individual assets for the scene. I then transferred the assets over to my Mac Pro, running Blender, in order to carry out the final rendering. The reason for this is that Maya 6.5 is only a 32-bit application, and thus can only access 2GB of the Tezra's memory. And this makes it basically impossible to render scenes this large, making use of Maya 6.5 running on the Tezra. On completion of the Cray 2 scene, I stated that the CM2 would be next. And just like with the Cray 2, I've made a start on the CM2 by first building up one of the compute modules for the machine. The pictures of a CM2 compute module that you see arranged on my desktop are the reference material that I used to create my model. So today I'm going to show you how I use these two machines to make a start on my CM2 compute module. I'm going to get things started by firing up the Tezra by accessing the L1 controller via serial tools on my Mac. Now that the Tesla is up and running, I'm going to start up Maya and load up the scene containing all the CM2 board components. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to select the component set and then export it as a .obj file, which can then be transferred over to the Mac and loaded up into Blender. I'm now going to transfer the .obj file that I've just created which now sits in the data folder within the Maya folder to my guest folder so that it can be transferred over to the Mac. I'm not quite done yet as I first have to gzip the .obj file so that it can be transferred from the Tezra over to the Mac via the FTP without any issues. Now that I'm back on the Mac, I'm going to make use of Cyberduck to access the FTP on the Tezra in order to get my .obj file. Next I'm going to unzip the file making use of decompressor and this reveals the .obj file. First up I'm going to demonstrate to you that you can't simply import the .obj file directly into Blender version 2.91.2 as it'll be imported as a single object rather than a whole lot of polygons and this will render it pretty much useless for you to use in order to build up the board. As you can see the scene has been imported as a single object and I can't select the individual polygons. This problem is easily solved by first importing the .obj file into Blender 2.79 and then saving it as a .blend file which can then be loaded without any issue into the latest version of Blender.
so I've now saved it as chips.blend. Now back to Blender 2.91.2 where I'll show you how I add textures to the various assets. As, as you can see, once they've been converted to a .obj file, they lose their textures that they were assigned in Maya. There's currently no shading workspace, so what you do is you go to the top of the screen and you hit the plus icon and go into general and select shading and that will bring up a shading workspace where you can then add textures to the various assets in your scene. Firstly I'm going to give the chips their black color and I'm going to do this by selecting one of the chips and what you'll notice is that although the various assets have lost the textures that were assigned to them in Maya, they have kept the names or the collective names of the textures that were assigned to them. So if I change the texture on one of the chips, the textures on all of the chips will change at the same time. Next I'm going to give all the metallic objects in the scene their metallic luster. Now you can see that all the metallic surfaces have a luster to them. This completes this shading demonstration and I'm now going to finish the video off by demonstrating the rendering of a complete or of almost complete node board for a CM2 connection machine. This hopefully gives you some insights as to how I've gone about building this model. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks very much for watching.